The small-scale farmers in Kenya's Great Rift Valley are on the front line in a battle against a new disease. And if the fight is not won here, it could ignite a war around the world. It's a fungal infection that can completely wipe out a wheat crop. Wheat is our most important crop and is arguably the most damaging of all the pathogens of wheat. It destroys crops. The small-scale farmers are almost experiencing 100% losses every year. UG99 is a particularly virulent strain of a fungal disease known as stem rust. Robert Park from the University of Sydney has been following the global spread and adaptation of this disease. There were some lines uh, that had been sent to Uganda from Mexico and we knew that those lines had a resistance gene called SR31 that was protecting them against stem rust. We had never seen a race of stem rust virulent on that particular gene in the past and in Uganda in the nursery these lines were heavily infected so this was quite suspicious. Out in the fields of the Kenyan Agricultural Research Institute, I'm introduced okay, to UG99 by molecular breeder Sridhar Bhavani. So you could see this whole patch of stem rust infestation. And what actually happens is it actually stops the conduction of water and nutrients from the source to the sink. And under severe conditions, what actually happens is it just breaks like that. Right. What we've got in front of us looks like it's been pretty badly knocked about. Yes, the heads do not have any grain. They're completely chaffy. To make matters worse, here in equatorial Africa, you can grow wheat all year round. You can literally find a field of seedlings right next to a field that's ready for harvest. Now, for a pathogen like UG99, that needs to strike the host at just the right stage of its life cycle, it's always going to find something to feed on. The more the plant pathologists looked into UG99, the more they realised that this is a really nasty package. Stem rusts are so destructive, both the USA and the USSR investigated their use as a biological weapon. The Yanks even built a bomb, the M115, filled with feathers loaded with fungal spores. But even without the deliberate hand of humanity, UG99 is spreading rapidly. Catching a lift on the prevailing winds, microscopic spores have already spread as far north as Iran. More worrying for Australia is the recent spread of this disease into southern Africa, giving UG99 a direct route into our backyard. The presence of UG99 in southern Africa is an added concern for us, so it puts us more on the firing line. To try and get some idea of just how vulnerable the Australian wheat crop is to UG99... Uh, what we're looking at here is a uh, few of the mapping populations from Australia. Robert brings Australian wheat varieties to Kenya and exposes them to the disease. Uh, there's this line where you could see large demerose pustules. What we've found is that quite a few of our varieties are susceptible to UG99. The first line of defence against UG99 would be fungicides. But there's a catch to using agricultural chemicals. Tabitha Mathoni's story is typical for a small-scale wheat farmer in Kenya. The second line of defence relies on the wheat's own genetic arsenal. And that is the foundation of a multinational war being waged against UG99. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. 
What we've got here is uh, materials that we received from several of the developing countries. As you could see, there's Australia, there's China, Nepal, Bangladesh. So everyone wants to test the material and see if it is actually resistant to UG99. And plants that survive exposure to UG99 are likely to be carrying some genetic trick that may be useful in developing new stem rust resistant wheat breeds. So far we've characterized close to about 50 genes for stem rust resistance. The most promising resistance gene identified so far is called SR2. Can you see this blackening oh, here? Yeah, yeah. Which is actually accumulation of melanin pigment which is linked to this gene. So this SR2 gene, in combination with other resistance genes in the wheat, may be the answer to UG99? That's exactly right. Once useful genes are identified, the wheat strains are crossbred to strengthen the plant's genetic defences. And this looks like the hope for the future. It's a strain of wheat called Kingbird that was developed by Simmet and is now deployed all around the world and it looks like it's got very high levels of resistance against UG99. But UG99 is a rapidly evolving disease, and one new strain of wheat may not be enough to stop it. So while the main battlefront today is here in Africa, UG99 still threatens the wheat crop of the world. <laughs>